we should be live. Oh, let me change on over. There we go. What's going on, family? Happy Friday to you. Oh, man, what time is six o'clock? We still got a few minutes here. Get everything ready to go. How is everybody, man? Welcome to, uh, I don't even know what session. This is session number five, I do believe, of our quarantine, you know, kind of COVID-19 session, you and I, man. Um, what does he so? Oh, we got a few people on here. Well, what's going on? I see people coming in. Come on in. Get in here. Welcome. Make sure y'all have y'all favorite drinking hand. You know me. I got my famous cup of water. I don't know why it's famous. It's just a cup of water. Um, sound check, man. Let's make sure. Can you hear me? Can you see me? If you can hear me and you can see me, please let me know in the comments here. Uh, give a thumbs up or a smiley something just to let me know that I can be seen and heard for today. Hope everybody is, is doing extremely well because um, we are still in the midst of a, you know, pandemic, I do believe is the, the term for it, the COVID-19. Still required to stay at home, do our best to stay home, stay safe, stay healthy. Uh, yeah. So what's going on, folks, man? I'm seeing everybody chime in. First question is uh, what makes A successful? I'm, what, I'm sorry, Carly, Ellison, if you can kind of clarify that for me. What makes a business successful, maybe? And we're kind of going to get into that tonight. Let's see what else here. Trucking with Mr. Coach, welcome back. It's good to see you. Um, yes, man, all is well with me and the family. As much as it could be. You know, it's 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 amazing that you know being quarantined with each other in the house all day, every day, like every day, twenty four hours a day. Luckily, I get to get out and come to the office. My wife has finally uh, made a comment about me coming to the office that she thinks that I'm using this as an excuse to come here and watch Netflix or something while they at home or while she's at home with the kids going crazy. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Outside of that, <laughs> the family as well, man, pretty excited. As a matter of fact, when I end this live here, I get to go home and uh, my kids and I are going to have a discussion. I gave them a homework assignment on top of their homework assignment. You, I wish I could have recorded their reactions to that, you know, but I think it's going to be fun. I gave them a homework assignment, um, just basic financial literacy. It was an eight, well, seven and a half page paper to read all about, you know, banking, savings, interest rate, compounding, stocks, investment. So then tonight we get to go home and have a discussion about that. And if they did their homework, I may give them some money to see what they do with it, right? So if they did it, so this is going to be fun. I'll keep y'all updated on that coming up. Um, funny note, funny note, there, there is a video. I don't know how I was shared with you. I'm about to embarrass myself here, but it's okay. Cause I love y'all. Um, so my daughter was FaceTiming. So I've, I have Samsung. I've had a Samsung phone for the longest. I guess that makes me team Android according to my kids. Um, but they all have iPhones, right? And so, I mean, to me, I'm, I'm old, I guess. A phone, as long as it can make a phone call, receive a phone call, and uh, send and receive text messages, that's all I needed. I'm good. Matter of fact, I know I stated I am so willing to go back to my Motorola Razor. Not this new Razor that's, that's coming out, which is kind of nice, but the old one. I said I'd be satisfied with my old Motorola Razor. But anyway, the other night, my daughter was, was FaceTiming with her cousin. And I just happened to get on the phone, was talking, you know, saying hey to that side of the family. And I did something with the phone and a filter came up, right? Like the iPhone emoji. I don't know. I don't even know what it's called, but a filter came up and my face turned into a red octopus. And for some odd reason, that just tickled the mess out of me. I was like, what is this? Why did my face turn into an octopus all of a sudden? 
And my daughter was like, it's a filter. And my wife was sitting behind me. And I'm making faces. I'm doing facial expressions. And the same expression I'm making, this filter is making. And I mean, I was dying laughing at that. Like, it tickled me so. I just couldn't. I was like, wow, technology. But while I was dying laughing, my cousin was sitting there recording me dying laughing because I went through all the filters and I was making faces. It's funny when I stick my tongue out, it tongue came out. It was a really funny experience to me. I'd never seen it, right? And so that video, my cousin decided to post on her social media with the caption, when your parents find a filter, something like that. But anyway, so I'm trending socially somewhere being talked about because I recently discovered whatever Apple filters are. So uh, that's my embarrassing story of the week. So yeah. All right, folks, let's go ahead. Who who we got here? Uh, again, Trucking Mr. Coach, appreciate you being here. Walter says, what's up? What's up to you? Uh, welcome back. Uh, Andrew Hamilton, peace. Peace be on to you. Vin Hennessy, good evening. All is well. I see a lot of thumbs up, so that means y'all can both hear me and see me clearly. That is great. Um, Let's see, Vince said, I still use iPhone 6S Plus. It still meets my needs. Exactly. I'm with it. When it comes to technology, I mean, I love my phone. It it um, it does what it's supposed to do. I can make and receive calls, it, and, and I'm simple. I don't need all the extras, but kids nowadays does it. But anyway, I, I, was, I was being laughed at because I found a filter. So let's go ahead and get to today's topic. I wanted to... Do a little different. I know this is the ask me anything, and y'all are still free to ask questions in the comments and things like that. But I wanted to more or less talk about something today, not just do like a Q&A type thing, but an actual content, something that I think is really important, and that is business blueprint. What is the things that we need to do to make sure that our business has a very strong foundation. Every business is going to have a different blueprint depending on the owner itself, uh, the needs of the owner, the needs of the business, the the, 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 the the customers it serves, the products that it sells and or services that it offers. Everybody's going to have a different business blueprint. And if you Google how to start a business, you will come up with over, over 4 billion results under the search term, how to start a business. I found it to be interesting. 4 billion results for how to start a business. And if everybody's writing about it, talking about it, and telling you, okay, this is what you need to do to start a business, then any and everybody who wanted to start a business should by now have started a business if it was really just that simple. Well, let me back it up. Starting a business is, in essence, just that simple. You only need two things to start a business, and that is a product or service and a customer that's willing to buy that product or service. When you have those two things, you have a business. That's it. Now, the challenge may come in, which is what we're going to talk about here as far as the blueprint, is how do we expound on that? How do we make the product, the byproduct of that product and service, the customers who's willing to pay for that product or service, the transaction, right? That is what we hope for. Because right, you can have a product or service, you can have a customer who's willing to buy, but until they buy, nothing's happening. So the goal is we want to find people who are going to buy and then actually buy our product or service. When that happens, we've created a transaction and the goal is to repeat that transaction however many number of times you need to, to be successful. That may be a thousand times. It could be uh, one time, right? It could be a million times. However many times we need to create that transaction, that is what we want to do here. So 
I just want to make sure I'm covering track here. So this is not going to be an exhaustive list, right? I usually try to be on here for an hour. Last time I tried to break something down like this, it took me almost three hours. So I'm really going to try to condense this down as quickly as possibly um, so we can have just a general idea of what is needed to really have a successful business. And this is not for the, uh, I don't know if I've told you, if I've broken this down before about the four, how I've identified the four type of business owners. The first one is the one who is accidentally self-employed, right? That's the individual, more or less somebody who's brand new to the job market, right? They're brand new to being uh, working. So they go to somebody and this individual says, you know, I'm going to hire you as an independent contractor. They like, okay, I don't know what that is. Sure, whatever. I'll sign the paperwork. And then they find out that they didn't get hired as an actual W-2 employee. They were hired as an independent contractor and made themselves employed. That individual is the self-employed by accident. Then you have the individual who is self-employed, uh, but just because they want to temporarily bring in some additional funds to, to fund something. Maybe they want that trip to Jamaica, a trip to Hawaii, Haiti, wherever it is they want to go. They temporarily become self-employed because they're doing a side hustle. Okay. So that's the second individual. Then you have what I call the selfish individual and that individual, they start a business, but they start the business just for them, right? They don't, they don't have employees. They're not trying to hire anybody. They're not trying to contribute to their community. They're not trying to do anything. They just want to start this business let it fund their lifestyle. And that's it. When they die, the business dies with them or they cut that business off and go to the next thing. Then there's the fourth type of business, the business owner who intentionally wants to be community-based. They, they want to start this job so they can scale up. They want to um, be a very positive pillar in their community they want to be able to impact their community and they want the business to live beyond them. OK, that's the individual who this blueprint is for. It can't be for anybody else because it really it would be a waste of time to do so. So let's go ahead and get to the basics. Right. Of course, we know that do your research. Obviously, you never want to step into any business without knowing the basics, the re do your research, understand everything you possibly can. All right. Um, choosing an entity, very important step now because everybody's thinking that they need to start an LLC for whatever reason. Uh, note that you don't have to be an LLC to start a business. Matter of fact, the last statistic that I just researched shows that from IRS filings, there were 25 million businesses filed as sole proprietors versus I think it was like 10 million or something filed as like an LLC or an entity. So that says that there are more sole proprietors, people operating as sole proprietors out there than actual entities. So an entity is not needed to start a business, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. Um, Definitely want to develop your business plan. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of get into that. Plan out your finances. That is extremely important. Make sure you do that, and et cetera, et cetera, right? That's when you Google start my business. You'll probably see that theme repeated often. Do your research, choose your entity, develop your business plan, uh, understand your finances, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But here is the actual blueprint. They're the real deal, the real blueprint here. The first thing is, is to really focus on your product or service. Really hone in and know in and out, back and forth, the product and or service that you're offering. You should be able to, if it's a physical product, you should be able to break it down 
and build it back up yourself. And the reason I say that is because we have a lot of people that um, will, what's the word I want to look for? That will um, maybe like support a product or, or get behind a product. And they really only know what's on the fact sheet. Right, they really haven't delved deep into it. They just read about it and said, "Okay, this is what the product does. I'm going to sell it." That works for some, but what happens when you have a customer that has a problem with the product and you don't know how to solve it? Well, you just lost that customer, right? Uh, same goes with service. If you're offering a service, you really need to know everything about the service that you're offering. I'll use myself, for example, in offering tax preparation. I couldn't just stick with the basics, right? I had to really know why certain laws existed, uh, why this theory existed. I had to understand section codes and things like that. I just, if somebody asked me a question, I couldn't just point them to or say, well, that's what the book says, or you know, that's what the that's what it says online, or you know, that's what the computer says. It, it don't make sense to be that type of business person, right? If you really want to be a successful business, you really want your business to flourish, right? You really need to know the absolute depths of your product and service. You need to be able to answer as many questions. Will you know everything? Absolutely not, right? Uh, even if you built it yourself, you know you got the part, but you don't know uh, why that part works the way it does. You may not know that, but you want to know as much as you possibly can about your product and service, especially more than what your competition knows about their product or service. That's what's going to set you apart. The more you know, the better off you are, especially when it comes to your product or service. Um, and then the best way to get information about your product or service and, and really focus on it is to go fishing. And what I mean by go fishing, you want to kind of put some bait out there, maybe offer something for free, a free trial, a free uh, sample or something of your service. Put it out there. Dangle it on the hook, put it on social media, put it out here on the web. When somebody bites, that's a potential customer, when they bite, now you want to dig in and understand what made them go for the bait. Here, I guess, is this is what you kind of like have a focus group. But focus groups cost, not all the time because you afford for a big marketing firm to put on a focus group for you. So you want to go fishing yourself, put it out there. Once somebody bites, find out why. What was it about your product and or service that made them come test it out? Was it the look? Now we talk about branding. Uh, was it the solution that it offered? Okay, remember, anytime we talk about products and service, we are technically offering some sort of solution. Did we offer a solution to their problem versus somebody else's? Did it did the uh, the copy that you put out there? Did that catch their eye? Then find out, you know, okay, you hear here's the, the hard question we have to ask. What didn't you like about? my product or service, because that's when we really can hone in and perfect the product or services is when we find out what we don't like, or when we find out what other people don't like about our product or services. It's kind of like going to, when you're doing your research, you'd go to Amazon, right? You pick a, maybe you pick a book if you're offering a service, right? Like on, uh, some sort of diet. Let's just say, what's what's the newest diet craze out there? The, uh, I don't know, but you know, a diet. Let's just say you pick up a diet book and you pick up this diet book and then you go to the one star comments. That is going to tell you everything that the customers did not like about that book. 
you just go there and it's like, man, well, they didn't like the fact that this book didn't really give good examples. It didn't really uh, make things clear. It didn't make things obvious. So now you know your product or service in order to really be better than that, it has to be that. It has to be clear. It has to be obvious. It has to be the things that the other people didn't like. So don't be afraid to really ask the question when it comes to your product or service, what didn't you like about it? Okay, what don't you like? Where can I improve? And you want to do that because eventually those are the people who are going to purchase your product or service. And if they absolutely see that you've improved where they told you it sucks and now you fix that, you're good to go, right? Nothing there. Um, Another thing when it comes to focusing on your product or service is you want to make sure that you get it copywritten or patent. If you're offering a service, if there are certain uh, titles and terminology, if it's a book, if it's something, protect it with a copyright. If it's an actual product or design, protect it with a patent. There is no point of doing all of this work. And then you get out there, put it in the public. The next thing you know, well, you didn't protect it. So now somebody else took it and they protected it or they copyrighted it, uh, copy wrote it before you did or patented before you did. And now it belongs to them. That sucks. Now, you may be able to fight that. Right. You can. I'm sure you can. You, you, you can definitely fight it um, because the trade laws or should I say the. Uh, um, Copyright, patent, and trademark laws do allow for certain things, but it's just harder to prove. So once you've honed in on your product or service, copyright it. Don't let nobody else take what you've spent your hard work doing. Again, copywriting is for literary work, right? Like uh, paper, paperwork and things like that versus a patent is for actual products, right? Like I'm sure Samsung has a patent on a design of this phone. Okay. So understand the difference between the two. Next, once you've done that, next thing to focus on is decide on a name. Now here we get into the brand. And this is very important because I don't really see this happening a whole lot. When you decide on a name for your business, it's extremely imperative that you trademark it. It's kind of going back to the same thing with your product or services. It is a protection for you. Trademarking protects your brand name. It allows you to really explore all across the nation without somebody saying, hey, I like that name. I'm going to use it for my business. Now I'm going to go out here and make money under that name. Especially if you've built it up, if you've built a following, if you've built uh, a customer base, you don't want nobody else using your name for their product, making money off your idea, off your brand, off of your due diligence. That's what you don't want. So when you develop a name, trademark it. But that also means on the reverse side, if you or when you decide to say, hey, I like this name for my business, make sure that you are not infringing on somebody else's trademark. That's one thing I don't hear talked about enough when it talks about the idea of starting a business is the fact that before you settle on a name, before you get out there and you start doing these things and you making these products and you begin this brand, make sure that you do a trademark search because it's the worst thing ever to do this big thing. Man, I got this new product. You just spent all this money marketing it, all this money developing it, all of this money creating prototypes and, and, and doing all these focus groups. And you finally put it out there in the market only to have somebody come back and say, you know what? You've trademarked or you've infringed on my trademark. They take you to court uh, and pretty much sue you for all your inventory. Everything that you put out there under that trademark, you now have to shut down. You can no longer sell 
the the company can uh, uh, who, who's suing you can take all your inventory and do everything. And that, who wants to go through that? So it's real important that you do this work up front. Doing this up front ensures that you will have longevity. It ensures that you will have extreme safety. And it just ensures that you have the absolute rights to that brand name. And if anything comes, you know, when we look at retirement purposes, you can keep the trademark to the name and you can license it to everybody. Think about Disney. Disney does a lot of licensing, okay? Meaning that they own the name Mickey Mouse. They've trademarked it. It's theirs. No one else can use it legally without their permission. So if a clothing company wants to put Mickey Mouse on their shirt, they have to get a license from Disney to do so. And the license will, it's like a contract that says, yes, you can use it. It has to be this likeness. Uh, it has to be this font. And you can only use it to produce X amount of clothing within this time period. That's a license. That's another thing. That's another form or stream of revenue that we think about. And once you have a trademark and your brand gets known and it gets bigger, that is an additional stream of revenue you can use when you consider licensing it. Uh, that even goes for products. When you own the patent, when you own the copyright, you can license that product to other companies and give them permission to use it. And that's an additional stream of revenue for you. But again, I don't hear that conversation being talked about enough in the business community. Yeah, we start these businesses. We get these ideas. We get out there. We get busy. But we don't have any kind of uh, brand protection, which is extremely important. I guarantee you every corporation that's out there, they their brand, their name, their logo, their font, um, font set, their colors, Everything packaged together is either going to be copywritten, patent, trademark, or it might be even all three. So make sure that you do the same. And the best resource to really understand that is to go to the USPTO.gov. I'll make sure that I put that in the uh, uh, comments on there, but it's USPTO.gov. And that stands for the United States uh, Patent Trademark Office. Notice. Patton trademark is what they do for copyrights. You got to go to copyrights.gov. I do believe it's that website um, and you'll be able to get information there, but make sure that we do that. All right. So now we talked about trademarking it and here's where branding begins. Um, and this is why it's important. This is why you want to really protect it because the brand itself, the name, the colors, the font, the logo, the, 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 the sound it makes, um, anything. That becomes the character of the business. That's what gives the business its own personality. And I know I mentioned sound, and that's very true because sound can become synonymous with the brand. Like back when Harley Davidson first started, their engines sounded or their exhausts sounded like no other. So they was able to patent and trademark the sound of a Harley David motorcycle. That became when you heard that sound like, man, that's a Harley. So sound can become part of that. But now when we talk about the name, we are getting into branding. Branding is important because it is the character of the business. And when I talk about character of the business, this is important. This is why it's part of the blueprint, the name, because you want your name to be associated with good, with excellent, with awesome, with magnificent. Whether it's a product or service, you are going to want your brand to be associated with a good, excellent, magnificent, awesome product or service, uh, period. It's kind of like, I don't know, my favorite candy bar as a Twix. Without me having to really see the name Twix on there, 
I can see the golden wrapper with the red writing just out of the peripheral view and be like, there's a Twix. I'm able to associate that brand because I personally enjoy it. It's a good thing. So make sure, trademark your brand, give your brand good standing because it is, in fact, your character on paper. All right. Um, next thing to blueprint your business is to find your ideal customer. Kind of like we talked about in really focusing on your product and service. Go fishing. Find that ideal customer. Make sure that you understand everything about that customer. Okay, when I talked about fishing, I was like, you know, you want to find out why they bought your product and service. That's true. That's that. But now we're talking about creating an avatar. Who is this person? Not just why did they buy for you, but who are you? Where do they live at? Are they in uh, major city states, right? Uh, are they in uh, big, big cities, small countries? Who are they? Like, what What do they read? Um, are they married? Do they have children? You want to know as much about this customer as possible because if that's the type of individual that is going to purchase your product and service, then you are going to want to make sure that when you're creating your marketing plan, we'll talk about that, you include those demographics in your plan so you can send your marketing to people who are like your ideal customer. Um, you know, we are, when I created the self-employed tax guide to the channel, it was for individuals who are self-employed, individuals who are at the starting phase of their business, who wants to go through their business and become successful. They don't want to make any mishaps, right? They don't uh, They don't want to make no mistakes. They don't want to owe the IRS at the end of the year. They don't want to do none of that. They simply want to have a successful business. So I had to do the research. And trust me, when I put it out there, I, I talked to a lot of people. And I still do talk to a lot of people that leave comments. You know, I'll be like, man, let's I randomly just say, let's have a chat. So somebody who'll leave a comment, I'll get their email and we'll set up a Skype session and randomly have a chat because I want to engage and really get to know who my audience is so I can continue to deliver what it is that they want. Not what I think they want, not what I think will be best for them, but what it is that they want. Once I have that and I give it to them, good to go. All right. Um, let's see what else here. Ah, yes. Next part of the blueprint is going to develop these two plans. Now, these two plans have to be developed almost at the same time. They are going to be the marketing plan and the sales plan. Marketing versus sales or marketing and sales. I want you to know they are not, absolutely not, the same thing. I've seen it online. I've seen a lot of, you know, people say that marketing and sales are the same. No, they are not. If I can use an analogy, I'll say marketing is like Batman and sales is Superman. As a matter of fact, a long time ago, I wrote a blog post. Um, I don't even know the blog post. I just wrote about it because I really wanted people to understand. And I posted it on my LinkedIn profile a long time ago. The, the analogy were sales versus marketing, where I kind of did the whole DC Batman versus Superman thing. And I put Superman was represented sales and Batman represented marketing. And I kind of laid out the differences between the two, but yet why both of them are equally important to your business, right? Uh, but for me, I'm a Batman fan. I like Batman versus Superman. So I fared in the marketing. But let me break it down for you. Marketing is the research side of your business. Marketing is going to go out and kind of do what we just did. We're going to talk to people, find out what their needs are, 
find out what their problems are and offer them a uh, and take that information back to the sales team so the sales can offer a solution. Did you understand me? Marketing is going to gather the information. In the Batman versus Superman analogy, for those who are comic fans or just fans of Batman and Superman, you notice the characteristics of Batman. He always does his research. He is in the Batcave. He got 50 million screens up and everyone is running that and he's collecting information. He knows so much information that he can bring down the entire Justice League. He has that much information on him. He is the research guy. Okay. Now, Batman does not have the nicest personality, I guess I'll say. We know Batman is the, uh, he barely, very, you know, rarely smiles, doesn't really interact, doesn't want to be in front of the camera. He's not the face of the Justice League, but he does gather the information. He then gives that to the Justice League, and then they can go out and execute a perfectly planned um, whatever it is that they do, okay? Superman, on the other hand, represents sales because he is the face of the Justice League for the most part. You will find Superman smiling. He'll go to the city's events and uh, cut the robes, shake hands with the mayor, the police. He'll, you know, kiss the babies. He'll do that. That's why Superman is represented as sales, because that is what sales is supposed to do. Sales is to take the information from marketing and understand that, hey, my customer likes this. So let me put this in a form to where I can say, customer, here it is. This is everything you need. And I get that sales is not easy for a lot of people, but it is something that must be done. Sales is not sleazy if done right. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people who have tainted the name of sales. They have tainted the idea of sales, but sales is necessary. I don't care how good of a product and or service that you have. If there is no sales, there is no business, period. You need sales. And I suggest, I know you can go get a sales team and it's great, but you still want to be able to sell your product and service. Sales is no more than a solution to someone's problem. That's it. My famous example, there's a lock and there's a key. If somebody says, I need to unlock this lock, and you say, well, hey, I have a key, and then there's a transaction for that, then that's a sale. In all honesty, a sale is just that simple. So therefore, we need to develop a marketing plan and a sales plan. Don't be afraid to do sales. It is simply you offering a solution to your potential client. Who is your potential client? Well, that's where the marketing comes in. That's why we need both. But do understand that marketing has its own set of rules that it must follow. Sales has its own set of rules that it must follow. The two are equally important. They come together and they do beautiful work. But understand that they are uniquely different and need to be handled different. All right. Um, then now the next one, develop a team. Businesses should not, well, when people say how to start a business, but there's, there, there's something, uh, the, 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 how do, I don't want to say you know, your business shouldn't end, right? So we say start a business, but how do we scale it up? How do we grow the business? Can we seriously grow a business as a one person team? It's possible. I'm going to just say that it is possible depending 
on the business model. You can get to a place where your business can sustain your lifestyle based on you doing it one-on-one, okay? Um, But if you're trying to get to a certain level beyond just what you can do on your own, you're going to need a team. And so it's imperative that to actually scale your business, be prepared or let's have in your plan that once you've reached a certain level, that now was time for me to start training people. Now was time for me to bring on a team um, to help out with some of these things, right? Like I know eventually I'm going to need a team because of all the things that I'm going to have going on, it'll never get to you if I'm doing everything myself, okay? If I'm doing it all myself, it'll get to you, but it might get to you in a year versus if I had a team, I could have it to you in a month. So I'm getting to the point where I want to actually start getting a team because there's so many things that I want to do, uh, so many things that's being, you know, again, because I'm talking to people. I want to know what it is they want from me. And based on the feedback that I've been given, I want to produce these products. But I know I'm going to need a team to do so. So I'm in the process of training right now. Uh, be honest with you, I'm training starting with my kids. That's one of the things that I enjoy doing is hiring my children, teaching them a new skill, teaching them about business management, logistics, time management, productivity. Um, I enjoy that. So honestly, the team I'm building, I'm starting at home first. Teaching my son how to do the audio, video, and things like that. Uh, My daughter wants to know the books and the bookkeeping and the taxes. So I'm starting there, but still it's a team. So make sure that you build a team and that will get you hopefully to the next level. And lastly, and again, I condensed all of this. So I apologize if I went too fast and didn't really focus on a lot of things, but I tried to condense this to fit this into our little time frame here. The last thing I want to say for the business blueprint is to waste nothing. There's a lot of products that we use, which is a byproduct of waste, okay? Um, One of my more uh, easier things to remember is Vaseline, petroleum jelly, a byproduct of oil. There was a residue that was forming uh, when they were uh, refining the oil. And as opposed to wasting it or throwing it away, they found use for it. And think about that in your own business. What are you wasting that you can find use for, that you can turn into additional revenue and additional stream? Think about how many things that we have as a byproduct of waste. If I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, cheese is a byproduct of milk. I do believe the skim of the milk, they use that and they make cheese. Um, when they're refining flour, well, that's what we get like the oat brand from, things that we eat. Uh, think about what we do with recycle. I just recently read where somebody turned re- plastic bottles into shoelaces, recycling. Things that can be a byproduct. I'm going to give you an example. I was wasting. In, even in the digital world, we can waste because I was wasting. This here is a square hardware is a square reader, right? Have y'all seen me show this to you before? I've shown you many a time. Can I tell you to get one to avoid uh, losing money, okay? This I've wasted because I've showed it like I am showing it now in the many of videos. And I consider wasting this. This is digital waste because not once did I ever link out to Square, reach out to Square and see if they had an affiliate program. So that if I show this and say, hey, here's something that you can use in your business, get it. And if you want to get it, click on the link, right? And if you click on that link, I'll get a little bit of commission because I'm an affiliate for them and we'll be good to go. Not once did I do that. So it was a waste because here I am promoting this product but didn't even know if I can get paid for promoting this product. 
So I recently reached out to Square and was like, do y'all have an affiliate program? And they said, yes, what I'll be. All this time wasted because I did not have an affiliate relationship with Square. So now I do. So if you guys decide you need something like this, you can click on the link. There's now my affiliate link. Of course, I'll get a little commission for that. And uh, you'll have a great product and uh, your uncle cousin will be happy because you use my link. I now have that. So I'm now looking around to see what else can I use? Can I allow not to go to waste in the digital world? So when you're thinking of, thinking about being a successful business, don't waste anything. Look around you. See how else you can add to your revenue stream. That additional revenue will help you get the trademark, the copyright, the patent. It will help you get the team together. It will help you be, build your brand. Waste nothing. Okay? And that's pretty much all I have. Oh, no, no. Sorry. Ooh, one more. Woo! Woo -hoo. Forgot that. The most important thing for the blueprint. Pay your taxes. My God, I'm going to take a sip of water on that one. I can't stress enough. That's going to be the last thing on the, as far as uh, the blueprint for successful business. Pay your taxes. I've, I can't stress how much I've seen as a tax repair where businesses have had to shut down because of unpaid taxes. And I'm not just talking about with the IRS. I'm talking about your state taxes. I'm talking about your sales taxes. I'm talking about excise tax. I'm talking about city tax. I'm talking about uh, uh, payroll tax. Pay your taxes, okay? There's nothing worse than getting to a, per, uh, uh, a level financially only to get knocked down because you failed to pay your taxes. And it'd be like, okay, yeah, let me pay what I do. But now there's penalties and interests assessed with that. So that's what you don't want. Pay your tax. Let that be one of the things you put on your to-do list when it comes to starting a business. First, find out what taxes you're obligated to pay and then make sure that you're paying it, which also means that you have to make sure that you're pricing enough to pay your taxes. I recently had a conversation with somebody who's self-employed and they were getting ready to assume a contract. And when they took on the contract, well, I said, before you sign, let's run the numbers. Y'all know me, your favorite uncle cousin, my hashtag is run me those numbers. So let's run these numbers. Now she wanted to take this contract on and bring somebody else on that she would have to pay as an employee and determine if she would make money with the contract. Well, without running the tax side, yeah, it was profitable. It would have been beautiful. She would have made profit. Uh, she would took the contract, signed it, been good to go. But I was like, but wait a minute. You have to consider the tax obligation, especially when you hire somebody that has a payroll tax obligation. So after running the numbers and including all the payroll taxes, it actually would have been a loss. She would have ended up losing money if she took that contract and brought somebody on as an employee, which made me tell her, like, now you got to go back and either renegotiate that contract for more because you won't be able to make profit with somebody or you're going to have to do this job yourself and not hire nobody. That way you'll be profitable. So when we look at being successful businesses, we have to consider the taxes that is paid because you get some and, and then now you're losing money versus making money. So that is uh, my summary, my crammed, compact summary to starting a successful business. And hopefully that's the blueprint. So I've said enough. Let me get to some of these comments. Um, cause I see him on here. Appreciate everybody that's here. Let's see here. What do we have? What do we have? Great advice. Thank you. I appreciate you, man. You know, definitely. Um, I, I don't know if it's great. I just said it, but if you said it's great, I'm gonna take your word at it. I appreciate you. 
Uh, and I hope it is great. You know, y'all put it in, put it into play. Let me know how it works. Okay. Uh, checking room at the coach. Uh, well, I just sounded real crazy. Like I was, couldn't speak. Trucking with Mr. Coach says, what, uh, what do you, with a YouTube channel, do you trademark it? Well, I would say if you're starting a YouTube channel, which is a great question, by the way, Miss, Miss, Mr. Coach, if you have a YouTube channel, YouTube doesn't own it, right? I mean, they own the, the actual YouTube, but the name, like, for example, the self-employed tax guy, that is my trademark. I own that name. I can take that name and do whatever I want to with it, right? Because I own the trademark rights, trademark rights to that name. I can put it on a shirt and I can sell it. I can put it on a van. I can I can wrap a car. I can do whatever I want to do with under the self-employed tax guy. It's mine. So it's not necessarily the YouTube channel itself, but the fact that you own the name is what you want to concern yourself with. So as long as you own the name, you're good to go. Um, so Arthur says you shouldn't trademark as soon as you have to come up with it, right? Wait until the business is viable. Well, let me ask the question. What makes a business viable? If you are concerned about whether the business is going to be sustainable, not necessarily viable, but if you're concerned about whether the business is going to be able to be sustainable, meaning that you can actually make a profit, I would suggest <clears throat> do a DBA, okay? Don't get an LLC because an LLC does not trademark your name. Understand that. Do a DBA, doing business as. That allows you to test things out. When I said that in my DBA video, doing a DBA would allow you to test the waters to see if your business model is sustainable. And if you've tested it and you've determined that it is a sustainable business model, this is something that you can scale, then I would do the trademark. So I guess uh, well, what they're saying is, you know, be cautious, right? We don't want to just go out and I agree with it. We don't want to just go out and immediately trademark if we don't know that the business is going to work. So granted, definitely there. Take your time. Make, make sure um, you're doing it right there, okay? Uh, Mr. Kelly says, dang, I almost missed. Well, yay, better late than never. Mr. Kelly, I'm glad you're here. Uh, you know, you can always go back and watch the replay. So, so you're here, man. I'm, I'm glad that you're here. Um, it says, is there a title of someone who can design a custom logo? I'm not an artist. Also, do you recommend to print merch and etc.? Uh, I do believe Mr. Kelly is asking is, uh, uh, so a C CXK, I know him personally, that's why I can say that, is asking if somebody does graphics. I'm pretty sure there is somebody in this community that does graphics. Maybe somebody in here can leave a comment uh, and saying they can do graphics. But if not, you can search out 99designs.com, kind of give them a visual of what you want. Fiverr.com is a good place to go. Even though it says Fiverr, Fiverr and it's supposed to be $5, but they have people who can design custom graphics starting from $40 on up to $5,000, depending on what you want. Um, but as far as merch goes, I say, hey, man, if you got a brand that has a message, merch would be a great thing. I started to do merch. If you can see on my YouTube page there, I started to do merch. Box 7 was going to be the name of my brand. Uh, but the IRS end up changing things. So now my brand really doesn't make sense. I don't know, but I haven't given up on it. I'll probably do merch again because uh, I still got some good sayings I want to put on there for us who are self-employed. So I say definitely do do merch. Um, somebody said the title is a graphic artist. Okay, so there we go. We got uh, uh, people reaching out. Cool. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, Lene Taylor says, I've been very confused about that issue. Thank you. Not sure what I cleared up for you, Lene, but thank you for being here. Much appreciated. I'm glad I was able to clear that up for you. Um, let's see. Hurricane Customs. Thank you for all what man. Y'all, y'all keep thanking me, but I promise you, I thank you. I've been able to be consistent with this live 
I think this is our fourth session now. So four weeks, all because of you guys. Um, a lot of times I don't make videos. Like you notice on my channel, I don't post like everybody else. I don't have a brand new video coming out every week, every day. I don't have a lot of content because I don't, one, I don't want to overwhelm you with the same thing. Um, in my mind, when it comes to taxes, it's like, it's not much I can really tell you that I haven't already told you. But again, that's in my mind. But that's why I said I have to listen to you. So whatever you tell me you want, that's what I'll talk about. Because really, if in, in my mind, I, we done. I didn't say it all I had to say about taxes. You can go back and there may be a few other things what I'm working on. But as far as taxes go, it's really not that much to talk about. But because you guys ask the questions, you guys are searching for the truth. I'm here. So as much as you're thanking me, I am thanking you. So much appreciated. Um, let's see here. What we got here is so a thank you again. Henny, she says, Google owns YouTube. Yes, Google does own YouTube. Uh, but again, if you get to trademark your name, they don't own you. They just own your content, which is why when we hit that box that says, I agree to all the terms of services and conditions, we got to read that. So keep that in mind. Let's see here. Um, yes, yes. Lee Boy 89, the last real play alive. Ah, oh, okay. The last real play alive. Man, I like that name. I guess I'm focus on that. Says again, he appreciates the business insight. Oh, man, I appreciate you being here. I like the name. The last real play alive, y'all. That that's we got somebody famous in our midst. So cool. Good, good, good. All right. Let's see here. And again, just a lot of thank yous. Um, appreciate that. Somebody says they met me through Stan Banks. Oh, yeah, the T-shirt side hustles. Matter of fact, Mr. Kelly, Miss Mr. CXK here, <clears throat> search out on YouTube, Stan Banks or T-shirt side hustle. That guy, if anybody's ever considered making merchandise or making T-shirts, he really, I mean, like, goes deep and shows you everything, the machines, the process, the people, the shirts, the quality. I mean, it's nothing he doesn't leave out. So if you're really considered about making merchandise, make sure to go check out my man, Stan Banks at, uh, you know, T-shirt side hustle, look him up on Instagram, find him on YouTube. When it comes to that business, T-shirt hustle business, he he's the one that, that, that really knows it. All right. So definitely, um, Appreciate you, sir. We reminded me that. Appreciate that. Let's see here. What else we got here? Um, and again, that was Peachy Dixon who reminded me of Stan Banks. So shout out to Peachy Dixon. Appreciate you. Naomi says, how can I track my startup expenses without my business bank account? Will the taxes still see it as a business buy? Well, Naomi, I'll say this. Good old pen and paper. I like pen and paper because it works. When it, If you don't have a separate business bank account, first thing I do is I recommend go get one. It's real easy, right? There's If any banks ever give you issue with starting a business bank account, you don't want that bank. <clears throat> but if you have personal and business mixed together, simply write out on paper. I wish I could really share my screen. I'm going to have to find the software out there that allows me to share my screen so I can show you like I have a bookkeeping software that I use, which is zero X E R O. But then I also have a very simplified Excel sheet and it has my total income at the top. And at the bottom of that, I have my expenses and my expenses are typed out. I have advertising software, uh, postal, things like that. So when I look at my bank account, I identify what was what, type it into Excel, and at the end, I have a summary of my net income. So again, talking to Naomi, if you don't have a business bank account and you're using both personal and business, track it. Make sure you go through your business statement, I mean, your uh, bank account, highlight what's business, and track it. You can use pen and paper, you can use Excel or Google Sheets, or you can use a software, or you can hire a bookkeeper. Those or the processes to go through there, okay? Um, hope that helps there. Let's see, what it says, why do you see a problem with having more than one business? 
isn't that part of uh I don't I don't think I said I have a problem with having more than one business. I just believe that there's an old proverb that I go by. If you chase two rabbits, you won't catch either one. That's when it comes to business and my uh, business mindset. I don't mind having multiple businesses, but I know it's, and I've, I've tried this before, trying to develop two businesses at the same exact time makes it difficult to develop either one. I know that from personal experience. I tried to have multiple businesses going on and neither one of them got off the ground. It was rather difficult, but then again, it was just me. If you had a team or a partnership, it might be different. I know that when I focused, that I decided to focus solely on the self-employed tax guy and the YouTube channel and the self-employed tax company, that's when I started to develop. And now that I can get that into a point where it's running by itself, now I can go focus on the other things, which is what I'm getting ready to do. So it's not the fact that I don't have a problem with more than one business. I just feel focused on one, get it to a place where it needs to be. Then you can focus on the other. As a matter of fact, you can kind of merge them under that substructure where you have the holding company at each individual of these subdivision companies. So, yes, let's see. Um, let's see here. We have more information on that. Uh, um, um, people talking about there's a page. She Meets City is run by a lady. She is an illustrator and create custom logos. Okay, that's good to know. Appreciate that. Okay. Somebody says that thanks for the info. My husband. Oh, so we got Miss Miss Fi Cordero on here. So that is the wife of Mr. Coach. It's a pleasure to meet you. Welcome to the channel. I uh, appreciate y'all being here. Let's see. I do believe there's a question here uh, as well. Uh, do I open my LLC to get paid 1099 or do I get an EIN? So let's see. Make sure I have, make sure I got it. I got to slow down with reading these questions here. The husband is Mr. Coach, right? Mr. Coach here. Um, LLC question. And I'm a trucker as well. Do I open my own LLC to get paid 1099 or did I or do I get an EIA? So make sure I understand this question. You want to know, should you open an LLC to get paid? No. If it's your own trucking company, I'm going to say for now, for now, if you're just starting. Don't worry about an LLC. More important than LLC is business insurance. Make sure you have enough insurance to cover the type of liability that you would incur. Because even as a single member LLC, you're going to pay yourself the same way that you would pay yourself as a sole proprietor, which is by taking a distribution for the company. Single member LLCs get reported on the same exact form as a sole proprietor, which is a Schedule C and therefore are bound by sole proprietor rules. So forming an LLC wouldn't work. Forming an LLC when you are netting, right? when you're a net profit, I'm going to say is 100,000 plus. When it reached there, then we could talk about forming an LLC because now we can save money on self-employment tax and we can change the color of money. That's when we'll do that. Hope I understood that question well and uh, asked it for you. Okay, so we we pretty much passed our hour mark. Let me try to see if we can fire through these questions. If I do not answer the question properly, please forgive me. I know from the past, I look at these questions and try to rush through it. I end up fumbling. If I do, make sure to leave a comment here in the video or shoot me an email and I will address it properly. So let me, let's go through here. Um, okay, we had uh, 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 an E... So, Miss Cordero says, and if I do EIN, do I pick company name or can I use my own name? Well, the EIN, let's understand what EIN is. The name stands for Employer Identification Number. Keyword there being employer. IRS says if you are not a corporation, meaning a C Corp, or you're not like a, an entity, you don't need EIN. Um, if you are not hiring employees, you don't need EIN. So an EIN is really just for, and the reason corporations have to have EINs because officers of the corporations are technically supposed to employ themselves and put themselves on W-2. That's why it's a requirement there. But an EIN is not necessarily, if you decide to get it, I would put it under the business name that you have. 
Um, but if you're going to be a sole proprietor, you can put it under your name. So either way it goes, you'll 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 be good to get there. Let's see. Daniel Chavez says, generally, what tax percentage should you plan for when you're just starting out? I get that. Excellent question, Daniel. And I get that a lot of people say that you should put aside X amount of dollars. I'm a little more frugal than that. I like to be more precise. So again, it depends on your numbers. I say run me the numbers. And generally when you're self-employed, you want to put 15.3% away of the net profit, not of the gross, but of the net. So after you've determined how much money you've made, how much money you spent, what's left over, you want to put generally 15.3% of that away because that is going to be what's due at the end of the year. But again, I like to be more accurate. So we have to determine all taxes that's involved in order to put on how much to put away. The self-employment tax, the federal income tax, your state taxes, all those involved, we need to know. So I would say run the numbers and then we can go from there. All right. Um, let's see here. My beloved forever joined late, but yeah, you can check out the replay. Definitely. Uh, Peachy Dixon says my credit union doesn't offer a business account. Okay. That works. You know, she did the smart thing. They don't offer a business account, but she did in fact open up a separate bank account and use that for business. That works. The whole key is to separate the transactions. Okay. Beautiful. Perfect. Glad, glad you did that. Okay. Um, Let's see. Everybody says, thanks. Thanks. Okay. This is what I learned from <laughs> glad you watched that video. Thank you for watching the video. Okay. Um, so let's see here, man. I guess the good, we reached the comments right in time. We are six minutes over. So I'm going to go ahead and end this broadcast here again to everybody who's watching the, re uh, watching the video live, watching the replay. Thank you for watching. Much appreciated. Thank you for joining me this evening, taking an hour out of your Friday to sit here and listen to me ramble is, is a wonderful thing. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to go home and now get on the nerves of both my wife and my children because we have a financial lesson to get into. And so we're going to do that. But as always, if you're new to the channel, make sure that you subscribe as we'll continue to do this as long as we are quarantined. Uh, so, yeah, God be willing. I will see you guys next week. Know that your favorite uncle cousin loves you. Hope nothing but the best for you. Want you to be successfully self-employed. That is my goal. And anything I can do, again, not in my mind, if there's anything I can do for you, be sure to let me know. If there's anything you want to know, be sure to let me know here in the comments and I will get on it. So until next week, family, y'all know I love you. Stay safe. Stay home. Stay healthy. Right? Uh, so we can do this again in the future. Until then, y'all take care.